Now, the Mountain Dew Zero Sugar Sports Desk with Johnny Conga. And we come off the top tonight with the Daytona 500 NASCAR Super Bowl, and we pick up the action in the second overtime. Final lap, a wreck behind Joey Logano in the 22 and Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the 47. Now, neither makes it to the checkered flag, and the rule is whoever was ahead at the time of the crash, well, you're the winner. Stenhouse's pit crew going wild, as you can see here in the replay. Clearly shows Stenhouse was indeed ahead of Logano when the caution was called. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Gets his first NASCAR Cup Series win since 2017. He is your 2023 Daytona 500 champion. Mentally ready to go after we uh, lost at Tennessee. We came out of the gate, starting group got us off to a great start and pushed the lead out. The game didn't go our way uh, Wednesday, and we just locked in for practice the last two days, and we got after it, and the results showed. Nate Oates and Mark Sears giving their two cents following the Crimson Tide's destruction over Georgia last night. Final score of 108 to 59 inside Coleman Coliseum. And speaking of Coleman, well, I feel bad for any SEC team that has to make the trek to Tuscaloosa when it comes to taking on the Tide following a loss. As yesterday, Alabama became the first team since the 1955 Kentucky Wildcats to beat three SEC teams by 40 plus points. And we say the word depth an awful lot when it comes to this Alabama Crimson Tide team. Names like Raylan Griffin, Damari Burnett, Javon Quinterly, just to name a few. It's honestly an embarrassment of riches to have all these pieces come off your bench. But Saturday, well, another depth piece stepped up and stole the show as the always energetic Nick Pringle had a career night, tallying 19 points and 12 boards. You know, energy, like, I'm just an energy guy. I'm not, you know, I'm not really looking to score. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to, you know, defend, rebound the ball, do the things that don't show up on the stat sheet. I mean, I mean, the hard hat, that's all I'm looking for. I mean, when you play hard, you do blue collar things, you know, points gonna come your way. Also Saturday, Brandon Miller led five UA players in double figures, scoring 21 points to record his 10th 20 point game of the season. In the first half, Miller became the fastest player to 500 points in Alabama program history. Joining Colin Sexton and James Hollywood Robinson is the only three freshmen to ever reach the milestone. And his head coach, well, he's got nothing but praise for number 24 in Crimson. Even when teams try to take him out, he finds ways. You know, we get some buckets in transition. He gets the old boards and gets some buckets. He gets fouled. You know, his free throw percentage is uh, high. He's got all kinds of different ways to score it. And I think you can try to take him out, you know, and you can do a really good job on him, and he's still ends up with 14, 15, 16. Let's check in on the Auburn Tigers now, who continue to play solid basketball, but ultimately, well, they got nothing to show for it. Saturday night, Auburn came up short to Vanderbilt inside Memorial Gymnasium in Nashville. A layup by Urzer Mejan with just one second to go to beat the Tigers 67 to 65. Auburn has now lost six of their last eight games, and Pearl knows, well, they probably should have fared better than Saturday night in Music City. Once again, they're really disappointed. Um, thought we, you know, we played well enough defensively. Um, hold Vanderbilt, you know, six below their number at home. Um, hold them to 20 field goals. And so I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if Vanderbilt's won a game where they've had only 20 field goals. We just up. And Auburn certainly right now an eight seed according to bracketologist Joe Lenardi, but Megan still plenty of time to improve that resume before tournament season. They're hoping to be playing in the NCAA tournament as opposed to the NIT. That's a look at sports. Thank you, Johnny. We'll stick with us.